All right, we've spent a lot of time looking at orbital diagrams, which is one way to put together electron configurations using the off-ball principle that is giving electrons the lowest energy orbitals first. Here is the way that we typically will see electron configurations done. So for instance, let's take hydrogen. It's the simplest element, the most abundant in the universe. It has one proton in the nucleus. We're not going to worry about that, but it's got one electron that we have to account for. So it's at n equals one, that first n principle quantum value period. Uh, that gives us an L value of zero, so that's going to be an S orbital or an S subshell. And then there's one electron to account for, so that's going to be uh, a one. And so this is the way that we would write the electron configuration for hydrogen, because it has one electron, it's at n equals one on the periodic table, and there's one electron to account for in that s orbital, which has an L value of zero. All right, so let's take a look at some electron configurations. Here's hydrogen at 1s1. Then we move over to helium. That's 1s2. Lithium, 1s2, 2s1. Now, you, you ask why. Do I have to put the 1s2 there? Well, we're still obeying the off-ball principle. We're filling up the low energy orbitals first. And so it's 1s2, 2s1. And then beryllium, 1s2, 2s2. As we go across the periodic table, we're simply adding the additional electron. Now that fills up all of the 2s uh, well, we only have one uh, 2s orbital. It fills it up, so we have to go across to the 2ps, and that's boron, so it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, and then carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, and so on. Here's nitrogen, our first half-filled, very stable electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, and then oxygen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, fluorine, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, and then we're going to finally fill up the uh, two, the n equals 2 electron shell uh, with neon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Notice we have filled shells for the 1s shell and filled shells for the uh, n equals 2. And what we know uh, if you'll take a look at helium and neon, is that filled shells are extraordinarily stable configurations. So you want to know that filled shells are very stable configurations. All right? So stability of electron configurations. Stable electron configurations exist when the S and P subshells of an element are filled. So let's go ahead and look at group 8. These are the noble gases. I'll throw them all up. And you can see for helium, it's at n equals 1. There is only L equals 0, which is an S subshell. And so two electrons is the most you can put at n equals 1. But if we go to neon, you have a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. There's two electrons in the 2s and six electrons in the 2p. 2 plus 6 is 8. Eight electrons is the magic number for stability when the S and P subshells are completely filled. So filled shells uh, are very, very stable configurations. If we go to argon, we can also see that argon has the 3s2, 3p6. Those are very stable. And krypton, the 4s2, 4p6. Those are very stable electron configurations. Definitions. The valence shell is the outermost shell. Electrons furthest away from the nucleus, therefore the most weakly held. Uh, they'll have the highest n value uh, in your electron configuration. So n equals 4 is higher than n equals 3. So n equals 4 in an element that has n equals 4 is its highest shell. That would be the valence shell, the highest n principle quantum number. 
The valence electrons are simply the electrons that go into the valence shell. Periodic trends. So here are some electron configurations for different elements. We see hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium. These are all alkali metals. Notice that they all have the same valence shell electron configuration. Now, a long time ago in this course, I told you that elements in the same group, the same family, the same vertical column, had similar properties. The reason they have those similar properties is because they have the same valence shell electron configuration. So let me repeat that. Elements in the same group or family have similar properties because they have the same valence shell electron configuration. You have one electron in the valence shell for all the alkali metals and hydrogens in that group. It's not a metal, but it has some similar properties because of that one valence electron in that valence shell. So metals tend to lose electrons to, st to attain that stable electron configuration. And we've talked all along that metals tend to give up electrons. Why do they tend to give up electrons? Well, look at lithium here. If lithium gives up its valence electron, its 2s electron, what it has is helium's valence shell for its next shell down. And sodium, if it gives its 3s up, it now has neon's electron configuration. And potassium would have argon's electron configuration if it gave up its 4s1 valence electron. So metals tend to give up electrons to get stable, to attain noble gas electron configuration. Electron configurations of cations. We're looking at sodium with that 3s1. It gives up that electron, has, and now it has neon's electron configuration. Let me give you a clue. You eat sodium metal, it's going to be extraordinarily toxic inside of you. It's literally going to burn you up from the inside out by oxidizing. Sodium cation, on the other hand, you have trillions of those. They are the principal cat this is the principal cation for extracellular water balance in your biological system calcium uh, as a metal it uh, is not something that you would want to eat but however calcium ion you have lots of calcium ion floating around in your system it's responsible for passing through membranes triggering heartbeat and uh, muscular contraction Periodic trends for nonmetals. Here's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are the halogens. If you take a look, they all have five electrons uh, in, the, in the P subshell. That is, they'll have seven electrons total in their valence shell between the S and the P subshell. They want one electron to become stable. So fluorine would like to have one valence electron so that it can have neon's electron configuration. Chlorine would like one so it can have argon and krypton uh, and xenon and so on. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons to try and fill their valence shells to attain noble gas electron configuration. Electron configurations for anions, as we said, they tend to gain electrons. Chlorine radical, uh, that is chlorine with an unpaired electron in its valence shell, it's going to try and gain one electron to have that 3p6 electron configuration. It now has uh, argon's electron configuration. It's a noble gas. It's inert. That means it's unreactive. You have trillions of these chloride ions running around in you, but chlorine uh, atom would be extraordinarily toxic and kill you if you had too much of an exposure to it. Sulfur, it would like to have two extra electrons, and so you can see that nonmetals will tend to gain electrons, enough electrons to fill their valence shells to get to that magic number of eight. We call that an octet. 
fill the S and the P subshells. Two plus six is eight electrons. That's the magic stability number. All right, electron configurations for transition metals. Let's take a look at iron, which is a good representative. So we're going to do iron's electron configuration, and then it's plus two and plus three cations. So remember about metals. They tend to give up electrons. Here's the electron configuration for iron. Iron would like to give up electrons in order to be stable. So what will enable it to do that? Well, the electrons that are the first to leave will be the highest in principle quantum value electrons. Those are going to be the 4s electrons. Why? Because n equals 4 is the valence shell. And the electrons in that valence shell, those are the ones that will leave iron first in order to make the element more stable. So the N equals 4 valence electrons were, will be the first to leave in order to give a more stable electron configuration. Now notice that the 4s electrons are no longer included in the electron configuration. Just so you know, you might occasionally see 4s with a zero up there. The valence shell is still there, but there's no electrons in it, so we ignore it. But some authors will go ahead and throw the 4s in there with a zero up there, indicating there's no electrons. The next highest energy shell are the three Ds. And the three Ds, there is there are six electrons in this particular uh, plus two cation. So if it's going to lose another electron to become a three plus cation, it's going to lose one and it's going to come out of the three Ds because that's the next highest energy shell compared to the 4s. And so what we have uh, or is the electron configuration for iron 3 plus, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, now 3d5. What this gives us is a half filled shell for iron 3 plus and half filled shells. Half filled shells, while they may not be as stable as filled shells, they are more stable than shells that are partially filled but neither half filled, uh, but not half filled. So filled shells and half filled shells are particularly stable.